Hello and welcome to today's online lesson. Today you join me at B&Q in Leicester and we're going to be taking a look at the different types of timbers and the way which each is supplied. Let's go into the store. Unnatural timbers are used to describe timbers that grow naturally on trees and these can be broken down into two categories. These are hardwoods and softwoods. So whether you're choosing timber for a gardening project, some decking, or maybe even some fencing. It's important to know the type of timber that we're using and the reasons why this timber is suitable. Hardwoods tend to be used for outdoor projects. This is because they rot a lot more slowly than softwoods. However, they are more expensive, they take longer to grow, and they are more dense. This means that they weigh more. Let's pause and make a list of all the projects where you think hardwood would be the best choice. Natural timbers grow much more quickly, are readily available, and therefore cost a lot less than hardwoods. Now we know about hardwoods and softwoods, let's jump back into the classroom and learn where they come from. Today's big question is what are natural timbers and how are they categorised? So in simple terms, a natural timber is any wood or timber that is produced naturally by being grown as a tree. An example would be oak, as this comes from an oak tree. Natural timbers typically haven't been treated and they haven't been produced by humans, therefore being natural timbers. Pause the video here and spend two minutes writing down the definition of natural timber. Feel free to include your own examples and any extra information that you've learnt along this journey. As we found out earlier on in the lesson, natural timbers belong to one of two categories. These are hardwoods or softwoods. Let's take a look at hardwoods first. So hardwoods originate from deciduous trees. It's easy to tell if a tree is a deciduous tree, therefore producing hardwood, as these have broad flat leaves which fall off in the winter. As you can see on the slide, the leaves also turn orange during this time. Examples of hardwoods that come from deciduous trees include oak, ash, walnut, maple and beech. Hardwoods take a lot longer to grow than softwoods, therefore means they're more expensive because they're not as easy to get hold of. This also means as well that because they take longer to grow, they have a higher density, therefore meaning that they weigh more than softwoods too. In addition to this, because of the fact that they take longer to grow, they also cost a lot more money than typical softwoods would. It's for these reasons that hardwoods are only normally used in products either if the aesthetics of the products is the main priority or if the products are going to be exposed to extreme weather, mold, wet or cold environments as hardwoods are more resistant to rot naturally than softwoods are. So the next category of timbers is softwoods. These are much faster growing than hardwoods, therefore they have a lower density. This means that if you used to have two pieces of timber, one hardwood and one softwood, and you used to put them next to each other, the hardwood timber would weigh a lot more than the softwood. And this is all due to the growing time, the fact that softwoods are much faster growing. In addition to this, because they're much faster growing, it also means they're less expensive because they're much easier to get hold of. We don't have to wait as long to replenish these timbers, therefore it's not such a concern uh, for suppliers and it doesn't drive the price of the timbers up. To identify softwood trees, you'll notice that they've got pine cones and they are coniferous trees. So softwoods come from coniferous trees. Examples being pine, redwood, larch, fir and cedar. The downside to softwoods is that they, first of all, they're not always as strong. They don't resist rot very well. So they're typically not used in outdoor settings. They're um, or certainly not without being treated. And in addition to this, they also contain knots as you see on the slide, which are these darker visual imperfections where a branch or the base of a branch once lived um, and then the grain of the wood grows around that knot. So although they are cheaper, they do come with some sacrifices as well. Hence the reason you really need to consider what application you need to use the timber for before deciding whether you want a hardwood or softwood. They're generally not as aesthetically pleasing. They don't have as nice grain as hardwoods either. So in high-end products, in products where money is no object, most people would go for a hardwood over a softwood for these reasons. 
So the question you might be thinking now is, well, how do we go from having a tree to timber in the shop as we saw earlier at the B&Q? Well, quite simply, we go through a process known as timber conversion. So as the name suggests, timber conversion involves, first of all, removing the bark from the tree. So once the log or the tree has been felled, it's been chopped down. The bark is removed from the tree, normally by a shaving process. The timber is then divided or cut up into sections. As you can see from the illustration on the slide, that's just a, a visual representation. It doesn't quite happen as that shows just there. But you can see there's a range of different shapes and sizes that the timber can be chopped into. These are known as the standard or stock forms or standard industrial sizes. Obviously forms just meaning shape. So these are essentially the standard shapes that are available. Just like when was in B&Q earlier on in the lesson, you will have seen many different shapes and sizes of timbers. And this occurs during the timber conversion process to create the standard stock forms that people require for their jobs. So your learning activity, what to do. You're going to go to the BBC Bite Size website and navigate to the material categories and properties section. We've provided the link for this in the online area. You're going to independently read about hardwoods and softwoods and their different characteristics. Once you've done that, you're going to return here and answer the questions in full sentences on lined paper. You have 20 minutes for the activity and you will need to bring your work to the next lesson. So the questions that you need to answer. How would you identify a tree that produces hardwood and what are these trees called? How would you identify a tree that produces softwood and what are these trees called? Name the category and specific type of timber that would be suitable for producing a garden fence. Explain the reason for your answer. Why do you think it is that timbers such as oak are less commonly used for furniture than timbers such as pine? And finally, explain the key differences between hardwoods and softwoods. Once you've answered these questions, you may leave the lesson and I look forward to seeing you in your next lesson. Reflecting back on today's big question, you will now have a better and more in-depth understanding of natural timbers and how they are categorised into one of two categories, being hardwoods and softwoods. If you have any further questions, then please speak to me via the usual channels. Thank you.